Welcome to Check Your Leader TV, and today we're going to bring you a never mind the Bill Hooks battle report to commemorate the fact that here in Victoria we're coming out of our second lockdown due to COVID, and in the UK you're going into your second lockdown due to COVID. Today we present you the Battle of Lockdown Moor. What I've got for you is a solo game of Never Mind the Bill Hooks. It's based loosely on a, uh, a fairly significant battle from the War of the Roses. Um, what I'm experimenting with is like Never Mind the Never Mind the Bill Hooks. Um, I'll just call it Bill Hooks from here on in. Bill Hooks is um, for uh, large skirmishes or very small battles. And um, ultimately, the way I, I look at it, it it's, it's really just scalable. Um, so I'm going to work on a, the, princi uh, the principle that each individual miniature represents 33 men. Uh, that's a good old-fashioned war game scale. Uh, one, one is to 33. I don't know why that became so popular. I guess three figures for 100, something like that. Well, to that end, basically what you're looking at is uh, each of these bases will represent 400 men. So 400 archers, 400, uh, 400 archers, 400 men at arms, um, 800 pikemen, um, 800, uh, 400 pikemen supported by 400 archers, uh, 400 pikemen, 400 archers, so on. 400 pikemen, 400 massed crossbow, uh, 400 billmen, 400 billmen, 400 archers, 400 archers. Um, 200 handgunners, 200 um, skirmishing archers. Um, that's the Lancastrians, essentially. Each gun will represent a plump of guns, a handful of guns, so maybe five cannon. Um, on the Yorker side, uh, 400 and 400 archers and uh, 400, 400 billmen. So, uh, 1,600 men here, uh, close to 2,000 uh, men here, well, 2,000 men here, actually, and another 1,600 men here. Some Irish kern. Um, I'm just keen to try kern out because uh, I went to the trouble of painting these bastards, so I want to put them on the table. Um, and um, there's also a group of uh, mounted spearmen approximately 200, and um, they're actually not on the table. They're off table um, in this wooded area. Uh, they were sent forward um, earlier, and they're just clearing this, uh, this uh, high ground and these woods, uh, doing some scouting. Um, the manoeuvre phase is completed, and um, essentially what's happened is the Yorkist army has advanced towards this Lancastrian position, um, the Lancastrians um, have noticed that there, um, there are more guns in the Yorkist force than there is in theirs, so they're not willing to sit back and just fight. Um, this battle on the right has advanced, and that has triggered the first shot of the day, which has come from this cannon here. And so the manoeuvre phase is over, uh, over with, and it's now um, we're now into the battle. Um, the... Lancastrians, um, let's have a look at their force commanders and uh, also a look at the table. Here on the Yorkist left, the Lancastrian right, wooded area, um, fairly open ground here. Um, there is a uh, some destroyed manor, uh, a destroyed manor house in the middle of the battlefield, and then hedges. Each of these hedges will cause uh, a token of disarray to any unit that crossing it. So it causes disarray to cross these hedges. Uh, but once you're across uh, and in the rally phase, you can just remove the, uh, the disarray. Um, and there's woods here. Um, this uh, ploughed and churned up ground here will uh, slow movement. And so uh, each troop type will lose uh, two inches of movement crossing this terrain here, uh, except for skirmishes. It's not, it doesn't bother them in the slightest. Um, okay, now let's talk about the commanders. Uh, the Yorkists have a commander amongst these uh, cavalrymen, but he's a dolt. 
so he only gets one command token. He will not arrive on the battlefield until uh, a double is rolled on 2d6. So basically, um, from turn one to turn three, uh, we'll be rolling 2d6. Uh, if they roll a double, they can then enter the, the, the fray. So their card will get uh, put into the deck. From turn four onwards, we'll be rolling 3d6, and on a double, um, they'll enter the fray. Um, the left wing commanded by uh, Edmund, Earl of Rutland, um, and he has he's a, just a normal commander. In the centre, we have Edward, uh, Edward the Fourth, and uh, he is uh, again just a normal commander. And then on the right hand side, William Neville Earl Falkenberg, and he is just a normal commander. So uh, two command chips for him, two for Edward, two for Edmund, and one for the Dalt. So grand total of seven command chips across four commanders. The Lancastrians, by contrast, they have Somerset on the right, and he is classed as a hero. They have uh, Henry Holland, Duke of Exeter, and he is um, just a normal commander. Um, and then we have um, Oxford, who is also just a normal commander. So they only have three commanders. Um, the other thing is, um, for um, Exeter to activate, uh, he also, they need to roll a, a double on 2d6 at the start of each turn. So a double on 2d6, start of each turn for them to, to um, activate. And... Uh, to actually advance. They can always fire, they'll stand their ground, but they will not advance unless a double is rolled on 2d6. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, this this game is based on an actual battle, but I've changed the name of the commanders because I don't want to make it too obvious. The other thing I've done as well is because it's a, it's a larger battle than normal, um, I'm going to permit all leaders to have a free move at uh, the end of the turn. The reason I've done this is because the commanders only have a limited number amount of commands to give. And if they've got more than two units under their command, uh, you'll have this situation where units will be moving off and they might get left behind. So what I've done is I've created uh, this house rule that says um, when they are activated, they have a choice. They can use a command to join a unit uh, right there and then so they can be in the fight or... They can let the troops advance, and then at the end of the turn, they just simply move up uh, their movement distance, uh, eight inches, just to, to catch up with their troops and um, be on the spot, ready to issue orders in the next turn. All right, so the first card out. It's a bonus card. All right, so let's see who gets that sucker. Uh, before we... Well, roll for the bonus card though. Let's roll to see if um, Exeter will advance in this turn. He needs a double to do so. Uh, nope. And is the Yorkist uh, cavalry available? They need a double. Uh, no. Uh, Yorkist will be white. And now we'll roll to see who gets the bonus card. Yorkist is white for the bonus card. Uh, the Lancastrians have got it. Okay, so... And the bonus card for the Lancastrians is they get a re-roll. Okay, so the first card out after the bonus card is uh, Lancastrian Skirmishes and Artillery. To that end, the uh, Skirmishing Archers have moved twice, 16 inches, and they've got into this, this area here where there is um, a decrepit uh, rundown building, and the handgunners have moved into this uh, plowed field. Okay, so the next card out. Ah, Edward. Okay, let's see what he's going to do. So this unit, uh, this group of Bow and Bill here, and one group, and uh, one order to this group of Billmen here, and he's going to get them to advance. So let's get that card out. Right. Oh, so they've just advanced forward. You can see there are two order tokens on them, and they're advancing directly to their front. Somerset. All right. He's there. 
He's got three command tokens. He's going to give one to this mix bow and build unit here. He's going to give one to the pike and he's going to give one to himself. And um, he will then move forward. And these guys are going to get forward twice. Straight ahead. Well, this pike block. So all the miniatures are peri plastics and metals, except for these pikemen and uh, um, and the troops in um, X's command. They're all front rank. And then his final move, he's, he's just going to move up with these guys here. So that's Somerset done. Next card out, Hawkenberg. Okay, the guy on the far flank over there. Okay, so Hawkenberg's got two commands. He's going to give one to this group and one to this group. And they'll move forward six inches. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. I'll move forward six inches. Just pass through those Irish kern. I'm going to assume that when they pass through the kern, they just simply push the kern to their rear. Bully, bully. As they go through. <coughs> can't move all he can do is get them to go forward and they're going to shoot um, so the range is okay so it's close range so two uh, close range volleys from those guys So that's one loose from these chaps and another shot from these guys. Okay, 12 dice hitting on fives and sixes. Uh, from these guys first. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five hits so far. Six, seven, seven hits. That means seven saves. Okay, being skirmishes, they save on fives and sixes. Two saves, five dead. Well, those handgunners uh, are no more, uh, except for one of them. But they did, uh, they did cause these guys to, to loose a storm of arrows. So that's uh, Falkenberg done. The next card out is a bonus. What will be York? And the Yorkists have got it this time. And they have got a perk. Take a free action with one in unengaged friendly unit. Well, the unengaged friendly unit that we took the free action with was this uh, mix of bow and men at arms from uh, Edward's command. And so they've gone forward to there. Uh, next one out, card out, is uh, Rutland. 
Okay, so now it's going to be Rotman's turn. Now, what's he going to do? Well, Rotman's got two commands. He's going to give one command to this uh, mix of Pike and Bill, and one to this mix of Bow and um, Men at Arms. So, uh, sorry, they're, they're archers and, and uh, Billmen, they're archers and Men at Arms. He's got two commands. He's going to give one to each. He's going to get these archers to fire twice. So 24 dice at these guys hitting on six, 24 dice at the pikemen hitting on six. We'll shoot at the pikemen first, because hey, why not? So hitting on sixes. So that's one, <laughs> one hit. Okay, so one hit on the pike. And now 24 dice at the, um, the bowmen to their front, hitting on six, much better, one, two, three, four, okay, so one hit on these guys, four hits on these guys, okay, so the pikemen, uh, pike save on a five and a six, uh, a four, five and a six, I think it is. Uh, pikes and bills, four, five and a six, and archers, five and a six. So the one hit on the pikemen, they'll save on a four plus. No, so they lose a pikeman. And the archers, they save on a five and a six. Well, they've saved three of them. One, two, three. So they've taken a hit as well. So. One on the arches. We'll get a little casualty marker for them. All right. Okay, so the next card out. Oxford. Right. The situation for Oxford is, if Exeter is not advancing, he's, got a, he's only got a 50-50 chance that he will operate independently. Otherwise, he'll only do what um, uh, Exeter does. So, every time Oxford's card comes up, we have to roll. Um, if it's an even, he'll act independently. Okay, so he can act independently, which means um, he will advance. So he's going to advance, he wants to probably get to that hedge, or maybe just shy of it, so that the uh, enemy doesn't get any advantage from it. So he's going to move, he's going to give an order to this company, this double company of bowmen, and this double company of um, uh, billmen. For his first uh, command, uh, these guys will go forward. I'll move twice. That's the first command. And the second command is told these boys to move up behind the archers. Now, as you can see, these are, I'm operating these slightly different to what I would normally do. Um, it's a large company of archers and a, a large company of, of bowmen, uh, of billmen. Okay, so the next card out. Yorkist skirmishes and artillery. All right then. Okay, so the first thing will be the, uh, the Irish Kern, and they will go forward twice. So that's 12. Yeah, and so they're going to engage with the hand gunner, what's left of them. Uh, because they're Irish Kern, they actually can go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. So they're going to go forward and uh, try and engage these um, hand gunners, or what's left of them, all 33 of them. Um, and then the guns are going to fire. So this first gun's going to shoot at those archers um, over yonder. So it's six dice from this gun onto those archers there, hitting on a six. No hits, but no triple ones either. 
And then this gun will shoot at the pikeman, hitting on a six. Uh, double one, but a six. So that's a handgunner. Uh, so that's a pikeman killed. So we take two away, bring one back. Um, and now the Irish Kern. Now, the skirmisher here um, can evade, and he will. Um, so he will evade eight inches straight back, which puts him behind those archers. So the uh, they've driven in the, uh, the hand gunners, uh, which means the last card out is Exeter, and that means Sergeant York doesn't get a turn. So now it's the, uh, the end of the turn, so we remove all the smoke from the guns, we remove all the order tokens um, from the units, and put them back with their leaders, and we move the leaders, they get a free move, okay, uh, like I said, just a house rule for this game. Um, they can't join units, but they can move. Um, they have to spend an order token to join a unit. Um, now he can only move eight inches. That's okay, that'll get him to there. And that's our dice to remind us that he has to roll to see if, unless if, if Exeter is not uh, moving, then uh, there's a 50-50 chance he ain't gonna move either. And so now we've, uh, that's the end of turn one, and we move on to turn two. Okay, so at the beginning of the turn, we have to roll to see if these cavalry are available. They need a double. Ooh, and they have arrived. All right, so um, when their card comes up, uh, they will arrive in these woods. Okay, so they've arrived. Uh, now we have to roll to see how, um, what Exeter does. Oh, he's come good as well. It's all happening. Um, so that's good to know. All right, so. So Exeter is uh, has suddenly awoken out of his stupor and uh, the mounted spearmen will arrive in the woods. So their point of entry is um, a one or a two here, three or a four here, five or a six here. They will arrive in the woods. So I've shuffled the play deck up, I've cut the deck. First card out is Yorkist leader, King Edward. Okay, so he's got two commands. Um, he's going to give one command to this group here and one command to that group there. What to do? Well, he'll probably start shooting at those pikemen and these guys will probably start shooting at those archers uh, in there. So that's... Not probably, that's exactly what they're going to do. Okay, so two volleys from these guys here. I've already turned the, uh, the markers to show that they're going to shot fire twice at those guys. Uh, 24 dice uh, because they're shooting twice. And the range is close range. So hitting on fives and sixes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Okay, that's kind of average, I guess. So eight hits. So eight saves. They save on fives and sixes. Oh, sorry, four. They save on four plus. Uh, one, two, three, four saves, four lost. So they lose four guys. Okay, so that pike block has got uh, badly shot up. They've lost an entire rank thus far. Uh, and now shooting at these archers in here, two volleys, um, again, hitting on fives and sixes. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. Okay, six hits. They normally save on a five and a six, but because they're in cover, they'll save on a four plus. One, two saves, four lost. Okay, that is a, geez, not a good day for skirmishes. Mind you, they've been taking a lot of fire, so um, so that's that. Okay, so that's Edward's card dealt with. Next card out, Somerset. Right, well, he's, he's in a bit of a bind, but he ain't got time to muck around, so he is probably oh, so short, can't quite get there. But, um, but he could charge these guys. And so he will. So, one command to order the pikemen forward, one command to attach to the pikemen, and one command to order these guys to go forward and shoot. So that's Somerset's order. Let's see how that plays out for him. Okay, so these archers, they don't have a leader attached, so they can attempt to evade. Um, four, five, or six, they evade. One, two, or three, they stand and shoot. Four, five, or six, they evade. So they've swapped spaces with these men-at-arms. So what that means is these pikemen are going to crash in to the men-at-arms. So that's going to be a bit of a, a brawl. We'll get to the fight in a minute. We'll do this shot here first because that's easy. So it's going to be uh, 12 dice hitting on four pl uh, five plus. Okay, so five plus hitting on... Hitting on, yeah, 12 dice. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Not bad. Five hits, which means these archers need to make five saves. They save on a five and a six. They save two, so three, three of these archers have uh, a bit of dust. Okay, that lit takes us to the hand to hand. Now, pike uh, charging, they'll get to re-roll the any ones that they roll, and they get three automatic hits from Somerset. So they've already got three hits on them straight away. So Somerset Somerset dishes out three hits on them automatically. All right. Then you've got uh, three, six, 18, 18 dice. Uh, and they're going to hit on a 4 plus. 18 dice at a 4 plus. So let's see how many hits that they inflict. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there is one one. All right. So nine. And I'll get to re-roll this one. Ten. So all up, 13 hits. So 13 hits. Now, the men at arms, they get one and a half dice per man. So that's 18 dice hitting on... Uh, 18 dice hitting on four plus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's cocked. I'm going to have to re-roll that one. Ten. So ten hits from the men-at-arms. Okay, so we'll do the, the, um, the saves for the pike. They've got ten hits on them. So they'll save on four plus. One, two, th they saved all but two. They saved all but two. Jeez, that's that's good going. So two hits on the pikeman. All right, so I'll just put a little marker here for now. So two hits on the pike. Jeez, that's good saving. That's, that's amazing. Uh, now there's 13 hits on the... Uh, 
the men at arms, and so they will save on uh, anything but a one or a two. So uh, let's do their 13. Like I said, anything but a one or a two, and they save. Jeez. Okay, they took five hits. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and the rest of them saved. Okay, so five five casualties to the men at arms. So they've lost by by three. So they have five casualties. They have to do a morale crisis test. They need uh, a six to pass. Seven. Okay, so they've passed which means that will be an ongoing melee uh, in the next turn. So uh, the Pike have hit, they've inflicted uh, five casualties on the men at arms. They've suffered two themselves going in uh, and there'll be an ongoing melee um, in, the next, uh, in the next round of combat, um, which means only two ranks each will count. Uh, so the Knights will, the men at arms will have six, seven, eight, um, eight, men counting and uh, 12 for the pikemen plus their three way make hits from Somerset. So that's gonna be an interesting ongoing my life. Okay, so the next card out is Exeter. And he is no longer um, hesitant, for want of a better word, and he is committed to the call. Okay, so Exeter's got two commands and he's gonna give them one to this uh, pike and bow and that one to that pike and bow unit. And they're gonna move twice. So uh, he's decided to go to the aid of Somerset. I guess that's okay. Right, so that's... That's Somerset done. Oh, sorry, Exeter. The next one out is Yorkist Skirmishers and Artillery. Right. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen is this gun will shoot. Well, it's kind of. I think it's in its arc, so we'll shoot at the. Pretty close actually not to being in arc I think so with that in mind they'll fire at those guys there so uh, 66 <clears throat> and they'll hit on sixes Whew, double one but no sixes That's that gun fired, so I know that he's done. Um, and now it'll be this gun. He'll fire those archers there. One six, so that's a hit on those archers over there. That's a casualty on them. There's only one one that time. And then the skirmishers, which will be these javelin men. Um, well, they're in range, six inches. Uh, they're six guys, and they hit on five and sixes. So three at this unit and three at that unit, because that's across their front. Well, it's all one unit, really, isn't it? But um, three at them, three at them. So these guys over here, nothing. These guys here. Two hits, okay. Uh, they can save on a five or a six. No saves, so that's two hits on these poor misfortunates. So they've, uh, they've fired and then they'll move their eight inches. Like the good Irish kern that they are. 
So that's uh, that's that card. Next card out. Sergeant York. Okay, Sergeant York, which is the cavalry on the hill. Okay, so cavalry in bad going, and woods for cavalry is certainly bad going. It's only four inches. So they're going to move to the edge of the woods essentially, but they'll pick up a disarray token for their for their uh, for their effort. Difficult for these guys to move through here quickly, so they'll move. So they get their first order. They move through the woods. They pick up a disarray token, which I shall get and place upon them. So disarray on them. Okay, so the next card out. Bonus. Okay, so we have to dice to see who gets that. White is York. York gets it. Three to two. So the bonus card that they get for this turn is Dummy, which is not a bonus at all. It doesn't really help um, when playing... Solo. It's just one of those things. Uh, next card out. Rotland. All right. Okay, so Rotland's got two commands. He's going to give one to these guys and one to these guys. He's going to get these guys to shoot at them and those guys to shoot at them. And he's going to do it twice each. So four and four. So that's going to be 24 and 24. That's going to be 48 uh, arrows going down range. Uh, all right, that's, that's going to be unpleasant. Okay, 24. Oh, actually, no, it's not 24. It's going to be, because there's only nine there, so it's 18 from those guys. Of course, it's uh, nine and, oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, nine and nine is 18. And 24 from those guys. So we'll do the 24 first. Hitting on fives and sixes. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five. So five hits so far. And then now we've got to do 18 at them. And so now 18 from these guys. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. That's another seven. So five and seven by my mathematics, that's 12 hits. So they have to do 12 saves and 12 hits saving on fives and sixes. And they've saved one, two, three, four, five, six means they take six, so they've gone up to seven casualties. Yowie. Still, um, that's, that means at the end of this turn, they'll have to do a morale crisis test. All right, so. I put that there to indicate a unit that has to take a morale crisis test. So they've got a little marker so I don't forget it. All right. Well, that's Earl Rutland done. Next card out. Oxford. Over yonder. That leaves only two cards left. Sorry, oh no, three. Okay. So Oxford's next. So Oxford's got two commands. So the first one he's going to have is on himself. And he's going to move forward and attach himself to the billman, and the second command he's going to give to the archer company. Um, so he's going to order these archers to shoot at those guys there. Um, that's one large company, so all they can all fire at them. Um, and they'll fire, well, I'll just do the first shot first and see what that does. Because um, that's going to be... Uh, well, they've got two casualties on them, um, and these guys have one casualty on them over yonder. 
Um, so they're both loose one storm each. So that's going to be um, 10 and 11. 21. Okay, 21 shots hitting on fives and sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight hits. And I'll save on fives and sixes. Well, they saved two, but they lost six. So those Kern have been wiped out to the man. Well, so much for that. Okay, so the next card out. Falkenberg's uh, men. So that's the ones far over yonder. Well, Falken Falkenberg's got two orders, so he's going to give them to both of these guys, and he's going to get them to cross this hedge. They'll both pick up disarray for for their effort. But they will get across. And uh A disarray taken for both of these guys. Which means the next card out. Oop, it's the bonus card. So York is white. Let's see if they get it this time. No, this time it falls to the Lancastrians. Ooh. It's a special event. So a special event card will get drawn. And they've drawn an extra arrow supply. One of your archer companies has shot off its initial allocation of six rounds. They get an extra two rounds of shooting. Okay, well, we'll keep that. Um, and that is the last card. Of course, the last one would have been Lancastrian Artillery and Skirmishers, uh, and they don't get drawn. So that ends turn two. So we remove the smoke from the guns. We gather in the order tokens. So all the smoke comes off, all the order tokens come into their appropriate commanders. All the leaders get a free move of eight inches. And those units that have to do morale crisis tests will take those morale crisis tests now so these guys here seven because they're below half strength they need uh eight to pass they've rolled a 10 all right so these guys are okay they passed their morale crisis test and now we're on to turn three just to recap where we are at the end of turn two um sergeant york's cavalry has finally come through uh, they've been activated um, and they're starting to move through the woods. Exeter has come, decided to uh, pitch in. Uh, he was hanging back, but uh, we rolled those doubles, so he's pitching in. Um, Somerset is engaged in a combat here, and he will be reactivated the next, as soon as that bonus card comes up, they'll be fighting. Um, these guys have passed their morale crisis test. Um, and over here, Falkenberg has crossed the hedge line and is heading towards... Oxford and uh, Edward is here um, uh, basically trying to support um, Earl Rutland. Okay, turn three. All right, so we're up to turn three. Shuffle the deck. I, now I'm going to cut the deck, and the first card out at the start of turn three is Oxford. All right. Okay, so Oxford's got two commands. Oh, what to do? Well, I guess he'll be uh, he'll be blazing away. So he's going to fire twice with these boys. So that'll take them down to three. 
And he's going to fire twice with these guys, so that'll take them down to three. Um, so they'd normally be 12, so it's 11 twice, 22. So 22 dice at those guys there. Hitting on fives and sixes. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven hits. Cheers. Saving on fives and sixes. One hit, uh, one save. So six of them go down. So the entire second rank of those archers is gone. Uh, that was pretty brutal. Uh, actually, they will because they're allowed to fire at the same target. So these guys are going to fire at them and hopefully they'll, um, they'll wipe them out. So 20, 20 shots, hitting on fives and sixes. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I think that's five hits and sixes. Okay, so that's another three gone. So that's going to be a morale crisis test for these poor chaps at the end of the turn. Okay, so that's Oxford's card played. The next card out is Yorkist Skirmishes and Artillery. All right. Well, there are no skirmishes to speak of. It's just the artillery. Um, this gun, again, can't really fire at them. It's out of arc. They can fire at the pike block at, over yonder. Um, and this gun here can still fire at, uh, at these chaps here. So they'll be doing that. So it's six dice and they hit on sixes. And if I roll three ones, uh, the, the cannon go kablammy. So this gun first, boom. Double one, uh, but no, no sixes. Jeez, these, this artillery is, uh, gives me palpitations, I tell you, sir. And now this gun will fire at the pike block and, uh, oh, sorry, pike and bow. One hit. So that is a, uh, well, it hit the, the guys at the front, so that's an archer gone. Okay, next card out. Ah, the cavalry. Well, he has one, one uh, order, so he's just going to remove the disarray token, and that's it. Uh, so next turn he'll move out. He'll be uh, disarrayed again, but, um, but this is the, the problem that you have uh, trying to get through uh, crappy terrain. Uh, next card out, King Edward. All right. Well, there's no fights. That, that happens when the bonus card comes up. So he has got two commands. He's going to give it to this unit here and this unit here. Um, but what's he going to do with that? Well, the next one out is uh, Edward. And he has two commands. So for the first command, he's going to order these guys to move towards... The hedge. Hmm. And then he's going to tell these guys to fire another volley at these archers. Hitting on five and six. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. That's pretty good shooting. Six hits. Um, these guys say normally save on a uh, five plus, but they're in cover, so uh, four plus to save. Well, there's three that didn't, so that's so they only saved one. So these skirmishing archers are no more. And then on his final order, he's going to get them to pivot 45 degrees. So that's Edward done. Next card out, Somerset. Well, he's busy fighting for his life. And amongst that, he can't give orders because he's involved in a melee. Falkenberg, all right. Okay, he's got two commands. So he's gonna go, um, he's gonna remove 
So you're going to join this unit here and remove one disarray. Um, so that's his two orders done. One to join and one to remove the disarray. Lancastrian skirmishes and artillery. Well, they've got no skirmishes left, but they do have artillery. So they're going to fire at these guys here. Six dice. Hitting on sixes. Uh, one six and one one, so that's okay. So that's a kill on these billmen. Because you get no saves against artillery. Next card out. Exeter. Okay, well, so Exeter's next. Um, well, he's got two commands. One to himself. He's attached to these guys, and one to those guys. These guys are going to move off towards these chaps here. They'll move twice. Actually, they'll move once. Pop out, they'll shoot them up. And these guys will move twice, which will get them to about there. Okay. Next card out of the deck. Bonus. Okay, so that is the hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we'll dice to see who gets the bonus card first. White is York. And the Yorkists have got it. 5-1. So they'll draw another bonus card. Forfeit. So play on an enemy unit which is about to be given an order token this turn. And take only one, not two actions. Okay, so... Right. <clears throat> but... That bonus also triggers this hand-to-hand -hand combat. So let's uh, let's zoom in the action and um, resolve that. Okay, so these guys will have uh, there's there's seven guys because they've lost five. All right, um, so seven one and a half dice per seven that gives them eleven dice, and the York uh, Lancastrians will get two ranks, so that's twelve dice plus they get uh, three automatic. From uh, three automatic hits because they have uh, Somerset there. All right, so we'll do them first. Only hitting on fives and sixes now because they're tiring. Ah, uh, geez, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a lot of hits. Okay, nine hits from the Lancastrian Pike block. The men at arms, they've got 11 dice and they're going to be hitting on fives and sixes as well. One, two, three. They only inflicted three hits. All right. So the Lancastrians save on uh, four plus. So they save two. So they lose one. So one casualty on the Lancastrians. And these guys here will save on anything above one or two. Uh, they took three hits. So that's uh, gonna go from five up to eight. And they'll have to do a morale crisis test. Um, and we'll take away one of these pikemen. Okay, uh, so they'll do the morale crisis test now. They've got eight casualties. They need a nine plus on 2d6 to stand. Oh, and they got nine. All right, so they're going to hang around. That's uh, stubborn, stubborn chaps. Okay, and the last card out, 
is another bonus card. Which means Rutland doesn't get activated this turn. Uh, we'll roll white will be York. And the Yorkers get it again. Not that it'll be much good to them because uh, this is the end of the turn. So the card that comes out for them, can they use it? Take a free action with one unengaged enemy uh, friendly unit. Well, they can. They'll use it to get these guys to fire. Or an unengaged friendly unit. They could turn in on them, I guess. Or they could fire over here. All right. Jeez, let's, what are they going to do? Okay. Unengaged friendly units. Um, it's either out of this command, this command, this command, or that command up there, the cavalry up on the hill. Um, okay, 50-50, it's on this side of the battle. So one, two, three, it'll be either the Sergeant York or... Um, Rutland. One, two, or three, Sergeant York or Rutland. It's one. Okay, so it's either going to be, okay, so 50 50 again. Um, Rutland or Sergeant York. Evens, it's Sergeant York. Odds, it's Rutland. Okay, so Rutland's going to use the perk. All right. Um, so that will be shooting with these guys here. So they're going to fire. One free action, they're going to fire 12 arrows into those guys there. Hitting on a 5 or a 6. Whoa. 1, 2, 3, 4. <coughs> Pardon me, 5. 5 hits on these guys here. That resulted in 5 hits. They save on 5 or 6. They saved 1. That's 4 hits. Whoa, that leaves just one. There's just 33 men in that archer unit there. At the end of the turn, these guys here have to do a morale crisis test. They've lost over half. They've got a left, they need a 12 to pass. No, so they fail. So those guys have uh, failed the morale crisis test. Okay, so they've failed, miraculously, though they didn't break. Um, they will go back nine inches, and any troops that they pass through, they inflict a disarray token on them. Um, all right, so that... Oh, steady on. So they're going to end up back here because they, they end up on top of them. So that causes a disarray token on them. They're daunted. A disarray token on these guys because they've gone straight through them to the rear. Um, okay, and because these guys are now up to their third round of melee, they've had two, so at the end of the second round of melee, they automatically both become uh, disarrayed. So, so in the third round of combat, only the front rank fights, they're only hitting on fives and sixes, uh, yeah, because of the disarray. So... Uh, that's that done. So yeah, all the um, all the smoke markers are removed. All the leaders' uh, command tokens are brought back into the leaders. Uh, just a bit of a tidy up. And all the leaders get a free move, eight inches, because they're on foot. Um, he's going to join this unit here. So he's now with them. Um, Rutland will join these guys here, um, and William Neville, Lord Falkenberg, is going to switch over and join these guys there. Devon's going to, uh, Oxford's going to join the Billman. He's to stay where he is. Actually, no, he's going to move across to here to this disarrayed unit. So that'll be there to remove disarray at the next opportunity. So let's just have a look at where we are at the end of turn three. Um, so at this stage of the game, um, we have uh, the right flank under uh, Somerset um, in a bit of, bit of a bind. Um, 
Somerset himself is uh, fighting for dear life uh, in um, in melee here, and uh, the rest of his command, um, well, his men at arms are in disarray. His archers are, uh, for all intents and purposes, destroyed. There's only 33 men left. Uh, Exeter is coming up in support, uh, but not with everyone, just with two battles of uh, Bow and Pike, and he is left in the rear uh, in, uh, as the final reserve. Um, this unit of massed crossbowmen and um, pikemen. Uh, and as for Oxford, he's in fairly good form. He's uh, waiting the advance of uh, Falkenberg, who's coming across this hedged area. Edward, for his part, um, one of his battles is uh, holding on manfully. Um, those men-at-arms are proving to be uh, quite tough nuts to crack. It's going to be an interesting melee. Um, with only four men-at-arms, that's going to generate six dice. Um, but the pikemen have only got the front rank, so that's six dice. But they will have Somerset there, and he might be the difference, um, throwing three dice in. Um... And finally, we have, uh, well, not finally, we have Rutland here uh, holding firm and Sergeant York has arrived up on this hill, but um, he still has to get off through that, that wooded area and then he has to remove any disarray before he can actually uh, be of any use to uh, anyone. So we're going to wrap it up there. Join us again as we continue with uh, the uh, Battle of Lockdown Moor. Um, see you soon.